This is 2011 FRQ number six in the non-calculator function. All right, part A says, um, well, let f be a function defined by f of x, this is the piecewise function. Show that f is continuous at x equals zero. So to show something is continuous, you wanna show that the limit exists and it is equal to the actual value of, all right? So limit as x approaches zero from the left side is going to be just the left side equation, one minus two sine x. That will be one minus zero, which is one, okay? Limit as x approaches zero from the positive side is equal to the right side function e to negative four x, which is gonna be e to the zero, which is one. All right, so the limits are equal to each other, great. What about f of zero? Well, f of zero is only defined here, right? Because it says x is equal to zero, so it's only defined in this function. So one minus two sine of zero, that's still gonna be zero, one. So limit as x approaches zero from the left side is equal to limit as x approaches zero from the right side is equal to f of zero. So therefore, this is continuous. F is continuous at x equals zero. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I did forget to put f of x right here next to all the limits. So don't forget when you're writing this, you wanna put f of x in here. Yeah, sorry, notation. Okay, all right, for part B. For x does not equal to zero, express f prime as a piecewise defined function. All right, so find the value of x which f prime is equal to negative three. Okay, so first of all, let's see, f prime is equal to, I'm trying to say paper. All right, so the first piece, let's take the derivative. One is zero, derivative of negative two sine x is negative two cosine x for x is less than zero, because it says not equal to zero, okay? Then the second piece of derivative is gonna be negative four, e to negative four x for x is greater than zero. So that's my piecewise function for f prime. When is f prime equal to negative three? So then you set these two separately equal to see if you can get negative three. So negative two cosine x equals negative three, or negative four e to negative four x equals negative three. Divide it over, cosine x equals three over two. Well, cosine cannot be three over two because cosine of x is trapped between one and negative one. So this will give me no solution here. Okay, how about this one? Divide by negative four, get e to negative four x equals three over four. Get rid of the e by taking natural log of both sides. So natural log, natural log, negative 4x equals natural log of 3 over 4. Then divide by negative 4. So x is equal to natural log of 3 fourths over negative 4. So this is the value of x that you will get f prime equals negative 3. All right. Part C says, find the average value of f on the interval between negative 1 and 1. So average value is equal to 1 over b minus a, 1 minus negative 1 integral between negative one to one of f of x. Okay, so the first piece is easy, it's one half. But the problem is between negative one and one, you gotta cross through zero. So it is really the integral between negative one to zero of the left side. So one minus two sine x dx. And then going from zero to one of the right side, e to negative four x dx. That will be your way of tackling this. Okay, all right, so you have one half. Let's take the antiderivative here first. You get x minus two sine x is gonna be minus two negative cosine x, right? Because the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine, so that cancels out the negative. Evaluate negative one is zero. And then e to negative four x is e to negative four x, but don't forget chain rule. The negative four is a coefficient. It comes out as it, uh, and as a reciprocal, sorry. So negative one fourth, zero to one, and that will be my antiderivative. Okay, continue. Plug in a zero, so zero plus two cosine of zero minus negative one plus two cosine of negative one, okay? And then plus, next plug in the one, negative one fourth e to negative four, minus negative one fourth e to the zero. Okay, two cosine of zero is one, so that's two. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, plus one. 
minus two, cosine negative one, minus one fourth, e to the fourth, plus one fourth, because e to zero is uh, one. So add all these up, two plus one, plus one fourth, three and one fourth, that is 13 over four, get one half, 13 over four, minus two, cosine of negative one, uh, minus one over four, e to the fourth. So this is perfectly fine, or if you want to be the one half, you get 13 over eight, minus cosine negative one, minus one over eight, e to the fourth. And that would be your final answer. Okay, that's it.